Howdy campers, coming up in this video I'm going to show you step by step how I removed my AGM batteries and replaced them with a bank of Reliant RB100 lithium iron phosphate batteries. Phil is sharing the story of his life with motorhome travels and advice, repairs and upgrades, gadgets and more, it's all the entertainment that you're looking for. To install my current battery bank, I removed one of the collapsible front facing chairs so that I could use the space below the seat to install them. Close your eyes. After removing the fuse for each battery, I start to remove the interconnecting cables being careful not to short circuit the terminals of the batteries. These insulated safety caps will protect the terminals and prevent against accidental short circuits. And now for the part I've been dreading all day, I've now got to lift these really heavy batteries out of the battery bay. Once installed, the new battery bank will weigh approximately 150 kilos less. Now for a bit of tidying up and remove the frame and straps that held in the original batteries. As you can see from my crude woodworking skills, I'm a sparky, not a chippy. It actually came out quite well for free hand with the jigsaw. After installing a 9.5cm frame below, I drop the floor into place. I'm using a Victron Energy Lynx Power In 1000. We are going to modify this unit so that each of the batteries can be connected via a 100 amp fuse. We're going to install four M8 30mm bolts underneath this plastic cover. The bolts shown in this video are actually 25mm and they're not quite long enough. Unclip the four plastic shields that protect the negative bus bar. These are the four bolts that we will connect the negative terminals of the batteries to later. Unscrew the four screws that hold down the plastic cover. I'm going to use fast forward mode to speed up some of the tedious parts of this video. Underneath the cover there are four hexagonal recesses for the bolts. Place the cover and reinstall the screws. An M8 nut is put onto each bolt and tightened up to hold it securely in place. If you'd like to know what the total cost of this installation was, please have a look in the description below. I'll show you what the full retail cost was and how much it cost me using the motorhomer.com discount codes. I have decided to use 100 amp maxi fuses as the maximum continuous rated capacity of each battery is 100 amps. Remove the nuts and washers from the positive buzz bar. You can see here how the fuse fits into place. You'll notice the bolt on the right is 5mm too short, which is why I'm suggesting that you use 30mm bolts. Install all four fuses and secure them to the positive buzz bar.
This copper bar is 100 millimeters long, 25 millimeters wide, and three millimeters deep. I cut a small notch in the case of the isolator switch to allow the copper buzz bar to come out at a 90 degree angle. My battery bank is designed to carry a maximum continuous current of 500 amps, so I chose a Blue C 600 amp isolator switch. Although the batteries are fused at 100 amps, I've used 70mm CSA cable. This will ensure low resistance and good balance in between the batteries. I used a hydraulic crimper to put the lugs on and then used some heat shrink to add some mechanical protection. After installing each of the negative cables to the negative buzz bar on the Lynx power ring, I reinstalled the plastic protective covers. With the positive battery cables installed, I now connect the negative cable and the positive cable going through to the electrical locker in the van. Don't worry, I haven't lost my iPhone. I'm just using it as a spacer. With the distribution system installed, we can now move on to the battery trays. I chose Atwood battery hold down trays for this installation. I trimmed about 4mm off either side of the battery tray just to reduce their width slightly. I was not happy with how well the battery tray secured the batteries. I decided to shorten the rods on the battery trays. I used an M8 die to increase the length of the thread at the bottom of the rod. I then installed a nylock nut and hacksawed off the end of the shaft. We are dreamers of the shore. After installing the battery tray bases, it's time for a bit of tidying up. I individually charged each of the batteries before installing them to ensure that their voltages were balanced. My apologies to the viewers with OCD. You will have noticed that I've put one of the battery covers on the wrong way round. You'll be happy to know that I've now rectified the situation. Now it just leaves for me to connect all the battery cables and install their protective covers. Feedback is really important to me, so if you have liked this video, please press the like button. If you have any comments, please leave them below. If you'd like to see more videos like these, then please subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you click the little bell icon so that you'll be first to know about new releases.